An art conservator's job would be immensely more difficult without the possibility of sharing their experience. There are conferences and meetings held regularly around the globe. Today, a specialist in textile conservation from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Dr. Florica Zaharia, is visiting the Pushkin Museum. I'm very pleased to be here at the Pushkin Museum uh, today to continue the collaboration with our colleagues um, at the museum. We have uh, quite a history um, in, our, in our professional relationship and this is just another opportunity to continue it. The art restorers from the Pushkin Museum have visited the well-equipped laboratory of the Metropolitan Museum of Art on many occasions. You're seeing here the lab as we are um, having today, not always have been like this, um, but since 1995 we are using these exceptional facilities um, equipped with a state-of-the-art uh, analytical equipment and facilities so we can perform our work at the best possible um, uh, condition to the existing today. We um, work with objects from the European collection, American uh, collection, Asian, uh, Northern Africa. So it's a great variety from all time periods. Um, that that means uh, the lab has to respond to to work on the smallest possible fragment, maybe the most fragile archaeological piece, or now to uh, 10 meters um, uh, wide tapestry or carpets. What is very important to us, even before we are starting the treatment, um, is to understand that the object, analytical work, investigation work, it's extremely important. That's why we're equipped uh, with various, um, var at various level uh, to respond to, with the equipment to respond to um, understanding the structure, to seeing the structure of a textile, to, to understand the fibers, the materials it's made, uh, an object is made of, and um, understanding the dyes, pigments, if that's the case. So all this is a conservator's job. Uh, we are responsible not only by, for the treatment of the object, you know, uh, determining its condition, um, performing the treatment, also prepare, we prepare the object for display. We coordinate the installation of an object in the museum galleries, maintaining the object um, during the exhibitions um, in the museum or um, installing it also in the in a other institution. They're borrowing our collection for temporary exhibitions and, um, and preparing the object for, for storage as well. So it's a whole package. We cannot see it, our work just uh, limited to one aspect of the museum work. An example of how we use this information, currently we have an exhibition focusing on the textile materials. It's a part of a series of exhibitions. It happened to be at the present at the Met, uh, an exhibition focusing on the plant fiber. So here is an example of one of our text panel that is included in the exhibition and we're looking again at the type of fibers um, and, and various aspects of its morphology microscopic images captures with our equipment are included in the labels so the public and the researcher if that's the case could be getting closer to the to the structure of the object and understanding its construction even understanding the way the the threads are, are made by spinning by splicing in this case One of the main principles of a professional restorer's work is minimal invasion. It is important to stabilize the piece to be able to exhibit and store it safely. And we have of uh, Egyptian uh, linen sheets from the burial chamber of Ramoses el Tahannofer. They are displayed in the museum galleries in the same way they were found. Usually we don't fold our textiles, but this is the original folding and we rather don't undo it, but give them the proper support so they could be displayed without 
damaging them, but giving to the public the information, the original information that they, they carry. So um, we actually build a certain support for the individual sheets, so they're keeping the the, the impression of being stored on the top of each other, but actually they are, they are displayed individually. And uh, this is the display we, uh, the museum came, conservators came up with in the 80s when the Egyptian galleries were opened in, the, in their modern aspect that they are continue to exist today. Another example of the fragile materials that we have in our collection could be, and, and again an example of a minimum intervention, could be this reflected in, in those images, archaeological materials that it's for which we create a special storage format again respecting their the information they are carrying it with them uh, creating a level of uh, of storage so they could be protected they could be also removed for their storage displayed if necessary or our um, investigation could be performed without uh, touching them without intervening in any way an exception of this kind of uh, approach exists and this is one example of a um, group of materials there from an early time period, eight, eight, approximately 8th century. This kaftan was reconstructed, um, fragments of it exist sufficient, sufficiently so we could come up with the uh, with, uh, original format. A new material was pro um, tested of course and prepared in the lab and uh, the fragments were um, consolidated and stabilized after stabilization on the, on the new material so they could be um, a condition permit to be exhibited in, in, a, in a form, in the shape that would have been originally. In the 20th century, there was a different approach to conservation. A good example is a burial shroud similar to the one in the Pushkin Museum. It was very well preserved. However, there were fragments in need of strengthening. The method that was used at the time was affixing the canvas onto a new base, in this case linen. Luckily, the current condition of the shroud is adequate. This is how it's going to be exhibited, stretched on the frame and of course protected with glass. What we did recently, we only improved the stretcher mount material, the mounts materials. Um, as we know, this has happened permanently, the conservation materials change, the market is changing, so material that would have been good years back, um, wood and, and other materials that we preferable not to use today, um, so uh, those kind of changes could be made, but we prefer to leave the art when it's stable without intervening, so this is a um, um, fortunate situation. Um, another material of the same type, um, a small fragment, but very important fragment for us is this uh, painted again um, on linen. It's, it's fragmentary, but the fragments are in stable condition, so we choose to display them on a support board created um, with, with appropriate and tested materials. The fragments are simply sitting on, on the support board and displayed at either horizontal level or at a very slight, um, on a very low angle slanted board. There are exception um, pieces that are uh, fragmentary but in good condition could be and, and, and this desire to be uh, displayed at the vertical level could be mounted. Um, during the um, previous decades one of the methods was to stitch mount those pieces. We don't prefer this method, we don't use this method for this type of materials. Any longer we prefer to, to uh, mount them without um, um, 
intervening too much at their level. Um, so the type of method we use, the type of mount we use and we develop in the department, we call it pressure mount. Um, it's a little bit deceiving, it's not exactly the, the pressure, the, the object doesn't suffer much pressure because of the construction it's made in such a way that the um, thickness of the fabric it's taken, it's supported um, between a cushion of, of uh, soft materials and, and the plexiglass that it's used on top to hold the piece together. It's all based on um, conservator's experience and development uh, over the years. Method continue to be improved. And um, uh, it's used today all worldwide by other conservators. So we are very proud to, to share this method with other people, uh, from, with colleagues from other museums. This experience of storing and exhibiting can be very helpful for the Pushkin Museum's conservators just like their work was quite interesting for Dr. Zaharia. The Pushkin Painted Shroud is a very interesting uh, piece from many aspects. The condition of the fiber and condition of the paint, it seems to be a little bit uh, in, a, in a contradiction. The fibers are very fragile, the paint is very well preserved. Um, and uh, uh, identifying, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, they did a wonderful uh, investigation work um, yeah. recently, so they understand all this. It's, it's very important to understand the, the relationship between the two components and from here how do you preserve them and uh, how do you prepare them for display. One of the challenges is its condition, the other challenge is its dimension. It's a large shroud, it's a large piece uh, in a fragmentary condition. Some fragments are very small, um, you need to preserve them, you need to display them uh, to let them be part of the object. And uh, how do you stabilize them uh, within the context of the entire piece that will be challenging.